Welcome everyone to the February TDL Member Forum. My name is Christy Park and I'm the Executive Director of the Texas Digital Library. I hope everybody's having a great week so far. Next slide, please. As we gather in this shared virtual space, we'll start as we normally do by acknowledging the physical places from which we're joining, all located on the indigenous lands of Turtle Island, the ancestral name for what is now called North America. TDL staff members work fully remotely, and we'll, we're all joining from our own specific places. I joined from Austin in the central Texas area, where the Tonkawa were among the traditional stewards of the land before their forcible removal. I invite you, as usual, to share your own land acknowledgments in chat if you'd like to. We will follow our usual agenda, as you can see on this slide, and I'm joined today by our Deputy Director, Courtney Muma, DPLA Coordinator, Elliot Williams, and our Communications Manager, Leah DeForest, in providing some updates today. And thank you to, to Megan Hernandez for managing our slides uh, for the forum today. So let's move into Director Updates. Next slide. First up, registration for TCDL opened earlier this month, so get yourselves registered. TDL members and students re receive discounted registration, and that registration includes meals and snacks, Wi-Fi, parking, and access to all the conference events. We're going to share a link in chat where you can learn more about uh, registration costs and get registered using Eventbrite. But heads up to UT Austin folks specifically, we have a special registration process for you since we share a billing system. It saves us a little bit of money um, if you uh, will register through a separate link that we'll provide for you in chat. Okay, um, we've received a few questions around masking and health precautions at TCDL. I'm glad folks have reached out about this. You know, we obviously don't know precisely what the COVID conditions will be in May, but we can safely assume COVID will still be a concern. And this is the first time we're back in person um, as a community at TCDL. We want attendees to do what you need to do to feel safe. We want to let you know what we're able to do on this so that you can plan accordingly. So as part of the University of Texas, which is a state entity, um, TDL is not allowed to require masking, nor can our UT-owned conference site that we use. But we will encourage it and support anyone who decides to wear a mask. We'll have masks and hand sanitizer available at the site. And we expect guests to extend courtesy towards individuals masking choices. If you have any questions or suggestions uh, around this topic, we really want you to get in touch with us. Please email us at info at tdl.org or you can contact Leah or me directly. And finally, on the TCDL front, a reminder that the call for proposals is still open. Um, and will be through the end of this month, through February 27th. So I invite you to submit a proposal in one or more of the categories that the committee has outlined there. If you're not sure what you wanna present or you're looking for collaborators or you just wanna workshop an idea, um, you are invited to join TDL and the conference planning committee for a proposal co-working session next week. So there will be links to all of this information in chat, and um, we're really, really excited about the proposals we're seeing come through and that we're going to see come through in the next few weeks. Next up, uh, I want to let everybody know some bittersweet staffing news. Uh, our wonderful DPLA Outreach Coordinator, Elliot Williams, has accepted a position with our member, UT San Antonio Libraries, and his last day as a TDL staff member will be March 3rd. He's joining UTSA Libraries as their metadata strategist. We are, of course, so sad to lose Elliot as a member of the TDL staff, but I'm also 
so, so excited for him that he gets to take advantage of this wonderful opportunity to grow in his career and also excited that he will be working with one of our member institutions and uh, be part of continue to be part of the TDL community in his new role. Elliot has made a big impact on TDL since he joined us um, in 2021. He's jump started our DPLA aggregation service in a major way. And he's built up our community around digital collections work through his digital collections love-ins, which I think he's going to talk a little bit about um, later on in this forum. So we're working with Elliot right now on transition plans for the DPLA service, and we will keep you updated as we progress on that. Um, one thing I can say is that after March 3rd, Courtney, Muma, and Nick Woodward will be your points of contact for the service for some period of time. And like I say, we'll keep you updated as that uh, changes and evolves. For now, I know you will join me in congratulating Elliot and thanking him and wishing him well in his new role. All right, next slide, please. Oh, thanks. Okay, so another thing I wanna make sure you're aware of, um, is our upcoming governing board meeting and let you know where you can access meeting materials. We have a, a governing board meeting coming up this Friday uh, in just a couple days, February 17th. And as you remember, uh, the governing board is our smaller board that provides strategic direction for the Texas Digital Library. It's comprised of eight library deans and directors currently and several non-voting ex officio members. So those eight voting members are four founding ARL members who have permanent seats on the board, and then another four who are elected at large from within the regular membership. The state librarian, Gloria Mraz, also sits on the board as a non-voting member, as do Courtney and myself. At this upcoming meeting, um, the board will elect a vice chair chair elect and a secretary treasurer to join our chair, Diane Brooksport from UNT on our executive committee. We'll also share project updates and um, approve a budget for the coming fiscal year. And we're also excited to welcome two new members to the board, Chris Helge of Tarrant County College and Holly Jeffcoat from Southern Methodist University who, who are joining as, as new members of the board to serve a three-year term. One of TDL's core values is transparency, which is why we publish our meeting materials and agendas in our DSpace repository. So you can access those materials along with our bylaws and other, other information about the boards. Um, in the link to our DSpace repository that we'll put in chat. And we welcome any questions that you have about the TDL board or its business. All right, moving on into services and project updates, starting with DSpace. So our um, DSpace 7 upgrades task force has been continuing its work to test DSpace 7 and to develop some documentation and help for our community of users as we prepare to upgrade all our hosted repositories to version 7 in the summer. We'll provide a link to our wiki page and chat, which you can use to stay informed about the work that they're doing. Additionally, um, our DSpace tech lead, Nick Woodward, has moved into kind of phase two of our upgrade preparation, and he is testing our upgrade workflow on the TDL DSpace repository so that we can refine the process and get it perfect, as perfect as possible, um, by the time that we start production upgrades on our member hosted repositories in the summer. Our next DSpace user group meeting is scheduled for February 28th. We hope you'll join us um, there if you're interested in or using DSpace. No big updates on the open access journal um, service. Our next meeting of the OJS user group will be held on Thursday, March 2nd at 10 a.m. 
And with that, I'll turn it over to Courtney to talk a little bit about Vireo and some other services. Howdy, everybody. Um, good to see so many folks here today. We're at almost 50. Um, so first, let's start with Vireo. Um, the Vireo ETD version for migrations continue. Um, our lead developer, Frank Smutniak, has three to go um, for our TDL hosted members. Um, we also have planned a spring community development sprint um, that's scheduled for March, and that'll be led by TDL, as well as the Vireo User Group Steering Committee, um, product owner Christopher Starcher in particular from Texas Tech. And we just want to thank our partners at Texas A&M um, for dedicating some developer time to this sprint with us. Um, it's significant for them to set aside that time to help us out with the sprint. Next slide, please. Um, now for a uh, Texas data repository update. So as you all know, TDL has been committed to providing a preservation pathway for all of our uh, relevant systems and services. So we've completed our first ingest of all Texas data repository published data sets into TDL's preferred digital preservation network partner, Chronopolis. Um, new published data sets, as well as any additions to those already ingested, will recur every six months as part of the service. And this service is included to all TDR members for no extra digital preservation fees. Also, the Texas Data Repository has recently been upgraded to the most current stable release of the software. TDL has added an embargo function, new file viewers, direct upload and download capabilities, GitHub and Dropbox integration functionality, and the DV web loader tool, which offers a GUI version of the DV uploader tool that was developed on TDL's behalf by a contracted developer two years ago. This tool allows for researchers to navigate to a folder of items on their own machine and then add them via a self-installed simple user interface on the web. And with that, I'll hand it over to Elliot for his last DPLA update. Thanks, Courtney. Hey, everyone. Um, I'm Elliot Williams. I use he, him pronouns, and I am the DPLA Metadata Aggregation Service Coordinator here at TDL for a few more weeks. Um, I wanted to share that our winter harvest to DPLA occurred a few weeks ago, and very exciting. We have not one, but two new institutions sharing their digital collections metadata with DPLA this quarter. Uh, Southern Methodist University and UT Southwestern Medical Center shared some wonderful collections with DPLA. I'm really excited um, that those materials are going to be accessible to a broader audience. I see uh, Cindy, Angie, and John are in the audience today, so it was uh, great working with you all to share your collections with DPLA. Uh, TDL members now share over 84,000 records with DPLA. We have a blog post up on the TDL website uh, featuring some of some highlights from SMU and UT Southwestern's collections, uh, and we'll drop that link in the chat, and I hope you'll take a minute to, to explore some of their great collections. I also wanted to share some information with everyone about DPLA's curation core. So in addition to their cultural heritage aggregation work, DPLA also has a large ebook program. And the curation core is a group of librarians, library students, and other information professionals that help supports the ebook program through curation, contribution, and um, creation of resources. So it's a great opportunity for folks with collection development experience, uh, open access experience, OER experience, cataloging, archives, um, a lot of different ways you can get involved in this work. Um, it's a relatively small time commitment and does come with a small honorarium. So if you're interested in learning more about that, um, there's a link in the chat. Next slide, please. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm also very excited to uh, say that the Digital Collections Love In is happening today, as Christy mentioned. Um, so it is Valentine's Week, as you all know, as well as International Love Data Week. And TDL wants to share the love for digital collections and digital exhibits. This is our third edition of the Digital Collections Love In. Um, I'm really excited about it. They're always a ton of fun. We have a fantastic lineup of speakers sharing collections and exhibits from around Texas and around the country. Um, and I can't wait to learn more about everyone's collections. So the Love In is taking place today from 1 to 2.30 PM. Feel free to come for as little or as long of that time as you can. And registration is still open. So I hope to see you there. 
And before I pass it off to Leah, uh, I just wanted to say that it's been wonderful working with you all. I've loved getting to know the TDL community um, and, and having the chance to meet so many of you. And as Christy said, I'm really excited that I'm staying um, within, within the TDL family at UT San Antonio and looking forward to working with you all in the future. And with that, I'm going to pass it off to Leah. Thanks, Elliot. Um... I can't believe this is our last forum together. I am going to miss you so much. So I want to reiterate something I saw Joseph say. I'm really glad I know where you're going because then I can know where to come find you and bug you regularly. Um, okay, so thanks, Megan. On to our next slide for our first community update. Um, everyone, this is Leah DeForest. Good morning. <laughs> I use she, her pronouns. I'm the communications manager and OER support lead with Texas Digital Library. And I'm really glad you've all made time to join us today. I've got a couple events coming up I'd like to share with you. One is next week, our TCDL proposal co-working session. I hope you'll attend this session next Wednesday and get a chance to talk with conference committee members. We'll talk about the theme again, um, go over quickly different presentation types, but we wanna allow a lot of time for everyone to brainstorm, um, work, and actually write uh, out your conference proposals. So many ideas came out of our um, information session last month that we have many avenues to follow up on. And so I'll be sending out an email to everyone who registered to last month's event again and remind you to come back and join us and actually write out and propose the presentations that we started talking about in January. So we've got um, a link where you can register and learn more. And I do hope I'll see you next week. It should be really fun. Uh, and next month, um, our OER at TDL meeting will uh, reconvene when leaders from TDL's OER community will share their approaches to planning their OER activities for the academic year. And then following the presentations, we'll invite all guests, everyone there to share their own calendars or planning tools or approaches. And as usual with our OER at TDL meetings, we'll have ample time for open and candid Q&A. Registration is free and open to anyone. And I wanna reiterate some of the text that's on the slide. These events are open to anyone. So please share widely with your networks and campus partners. Um, many of uh, our events are of interest to not just librarians and archivists, but also your faculty and students. So please do share. And next up, um, we, as usual, have a big roster of meetings coming up, and you are always welcome to attend and also invite your campus partners to join in as they want. I want to take a second to give just a quick shout out to my colleague Megan Hernandez, uh, TDL's administrative associate who's helping us with slides today. Megan's been doing a fantastic job all around, and especially with keeping our website and event pages updated. And FYI, Megan ha also has us all caught up on publishing our previous member forums on YouTube and in TDL's DSpace. So thanks so much, Megan, for many reasons. I'm so glad you're with us. Um, finally, while we're looking at these um, member group meetings and events coming up this month and next, I wanna mention that TDL's groups have an opportunity to meet in person at Texas Conference on Digital Libraries. These meetings, do not require a submission of a presentation proposal if it's just a business meeting. Um, we will have meeting rooms and uh, with AV available, we have different times available. It will be first come first serve, but we would like to um, know if you're interested. So we'll share a link in chat where if your member group isn't already listed, you can sign up and include your contact information and other meeting information that should be kind of clear within that form, or I'm sorry, spreadsheet. Um, you can capture your preferences in terms of times and date. And then what will happen next is a TCDL committee member will be in touch to coordinate and finalize the details of your meeting. You're also welcome to email me if you have any questions or suggestions about the member group meetings at the conference. That's it from me and I'll hand things back to Christy now. All right, thanks Leah and thanks uh, Elliot and Courtney. For your updates, uh, we do have time for questions. If anybody has anything, um, you can put your questions in chat, or if you'd like to raise your hand, we can call on you to unmute. 
Emily asks, what was the early bird registration deadline for TCDL again? Oh, Leah, I'm going to lean on you for that. April 30th. April 30th. Yeah. And I saw a question earlier in chat about um, hotel information for TCDL. I believe that is on the website as well. Uh, we do have um, some discounted rates. Yeah, and, um, I can re-up that link. We dropped that in a little bit earlier, but we yeah. do have a hotel. I think we're ironing out whether we'll have a second one, but we have one that should have plenty of rooms if you want to have a single room or if you want to share. That's great. Thank you. Um, and thanks, Susan, for the shout out to Nick Lolland, who is always so helpful solving weird problems I submit to the help desk. Well, um, that is so nice of you to say, and I know um, he will appreciate hearing that. I don't know if he's here in the in the forum today, but I'll definitely, oh yeah, he is. Okay, good. So don't have to pass that along to him. Um, you know, we have a wonderful team of folks who uh, take part in, in dealing with those help desk requests. Um, Nick Lawland is awesome and, um, probably the one most folks deal with on a regular basis. Um, and he works with Andrew Ryder, our help desk GRA, um, who is back with us for, I think, one more semester and is wonderful at helping us manage those help desk requests. But the rest of our tech team as well is involved in a lot of cases and in, in working through those requests. Nick Woodward, Clark Kim, um, Frank Smutniak and, and uh, Courtney as well. And um, they do a great job um, helping our, our members and users deal with the issues they come up with. But that is not to take anything away from Nick Lawland because he does a fantastic job. Any other questions or announcements? Anything anybody wants to share? I feel like we're usually in these meetings running right up until the very end of the half hour. So it feels luxurious to have a little bit of time. <clears throat> all right. Well, um, thank you all for, for joining us today for this half hour. Um, we look forward to having Elliot with us in the forum as a TDL member in the future. This will be his last forum as a as a staff member. And Elliot, we just want to say thank you again. It's hard to be too angry about losing him when he's going to work with such a wonderful, our wonderful, wonderful colleagues at UTSA. Um, so y'all are lucky to have him and he's lucky to have you as well. So um, best of luck to you, Elliot. And thank you, everybody. <laughs> thank you, everybody for being here today. We'll see you next time.